Hey guys, welcome to Middle Swite Tail. Today is February 24th, and we're doing one of my favorite early off-season activities, and that's heading to a taxidermist. We're uh, pulling in the driveway right now. My buddy Brian Reinertsen, who's a very well-known taxidermist, does some amazing work. We're picking up four Middle Swite Tail deer. Uh, my buck. I have a good feeling about tonight for some reason. Josh's public land buck. Oh my God! What? Lee's buck pop. Um, utmost respect to these animals and Mike Reed's daughter's buck, Bella's early season buck. So we're pulling in his driveway, uh, gonna go check him out. I can't wait to see the finished products. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. This, always excited for this day. Oh, it is. It's a fun day when this happens, so. There he is. There he is, the wide one. Man, that looks awesome. Yeah, he was fun. I love that eye turned off to the side looks super real like yeah that. with with a pose like this I like to give him some good attitude when I when I altered the form I kind of had him going this way and then having him looking and looking back that way it makes yeah uh, especially it, looking like straight on from you can really tell yeah yep yeah, that's that's, that's the look I was I was going for and it just it just adds some life to the to the mount when you have it on the wall so yeah the cape turned out pretty good huh beautiful cape for as busted up as he was and, and as old as he is, the cape actually t was really, really nice. Yeah, that's awesome. A lot of deer of this of this age class, their capes are pretty torn up. So, yeah, this was this was a really nice cape to work with. Man, he looks awesome. And Bella's buck right here, right? Yeah, this this cape was a very rare cape for a deer of this size to have. You know, an early season youth cape. It it has all of the all of the things you would want, especially yeah. the size. You because most youth deer and, and deer in the in the summertime or September have smaller necks and they're not really beefed up yet. And this this guy was. Yeah, that cape so, is immaculate. Yeah, it's absolutely perfect. I mean, there's just not one hair out of place. And then all of his guard hairs were were all in place too, which is really nice. Um, you see, they're you know basically that long. And, yeah. And uh, really add to the. To the way that it looks and when they have short hair like this too they're everything is so crisp like their you know their ears are nice and crisp you can get good good definition on the ear butt muscles get some little folds in the neck and, and that kind of stuff that normally wouldn't show in in november december yeah so and then and then with him being blind that really added to the there you go that's cool so mike mike sent me a bunch of reference pictures um that he had and uh, and then after the after the kill, and I basically studied those pictures as much as I could and tried to recreate the eye and have it look as as close as possible. So, that that's character right there. Yeah, yeah, that's it, cool. It really is. So that's going to be a, a, quite a conversation piece for for people. So just I, to, I can't wait to see Bella's reaction when she sees it too. Yeah. That's what well, Mike was saying. That's the one thing she was really excited about. She's like, make sure the eye's blind. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so. so we got two more that we're going to look at. Josh, why don't you give me the camera? I'll film your reaction on your deer. <laughs> well, these ones I, I just got put together. I'm going to do, do some finish work this week and uh, have them do the classic on Friday. So this is Josh's deer which had a really, really nice cape, really dark face. And that's that's what I really like to look at with these deer and, and uh, really notice when I'm working on them, is how unique every whitetail is. I mean, not just the rack, but the actual cape and the character in that. His has a really dark face, um, actually has a little bit of a, another white white spot right here. Um, and then uh, in nice and nice fluffy head, because when, when was this? Was this early November or October? Or October. Oh, it was late October. Yeah. yeah, so he was really starting to get fluffed up for the winter and everything. And did some nice eye rotation here. Give him some, uh, give him some a action and some attitude here. I really like this form that I mm -hmm. that I use because you get tons of shoulder on this side. Great. And uh, and this one is Lee's, which is a completely different style cape. Um, his rack's pretty big too. Uh, but if you look at his, his his face is just white compared to yours. Mm -hmm. um, really really light light colored, and his uh, forehead is just this beautiful acorn like orangish orangish color. And his head is just a block. I mean, it's just a, yeah, I a really that. big, 
really big deer, both both Stuff. antler wise and frame wise. Um, as far as forms go, um, this is the this is one of the biggest heads that you can get. It's actually an eight inch eye to nose, and um, he filled up every every bit of it. So just a just a beast of a deer. All right, we're getting ready to take off here. I'm excited to get this guy home. Uh, this weekend is the Iowa Deer Classic. We're actually gonna have all four of the mounts we just talked about hanging in our booth, uh, along with a few others, including the, the buck I called George Brett. For those of you who remember that deer, Brian did a really cool piece with that deer last year. So if you're in the area and wanna come talk hunting with us and see some mounts, stop by the Midwest Whitetail booth at the Iowa Deer Classic this weekend. It was sure cool to see some of these deer again that made the show so much fun to watch last fall. Now I'm going to dive into a topic that, you got a deer? Yeah. How far? Uh, 50 yards straight off your left. Yeah. Is it bedded? No, she's walking. No, just feeding, right? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so, so we're going to be talking, in, in fact, go ahead and pan over there. Did you, did you pick it up? So this is what we're going to be talking about in the rest of the episode today is what's going on with these deer or how are they going to be affected by this hard winter that we've had. And this deer living right here by my office, that's not the first one that's been up around here. In fact, yesterday I filmed uh, four or five of them just milling around right here eating twigs 15 to 20 yards away from my office. One of them is eating cedar boughs. So the deer are stressed now to a higher level than what we've seen in past years. In fact, I've got a field on this farm that Justin's gonna go film this evening that got overlooked when it came time to combine. And there's probably, there was probably about 12 to 15 acres of beans there. And every night the deer have just been piling in there. I know they've been coming from, you know, who knows how far away, but there's so few uh, very reliable food sources in this area now that whenever the deer find any of those spots, they just come and just pile in on them. And, and the, this begs the question, of how this is going to affect, how this stress level is going to affect the quality of the deer that we hunt, the, the health of the deer, the quality of the antlers. Uh, you know, how does that translate from what we're seeing now with all this record levels of snow and cold temperatures into this coming season? And I had a conversation with Dr. Grant Woods today, and uh, he's a PhD deer biologist. In fact, he runs the growingdeertv.com uh, website. He's got a lot of good information there, so check that out also. But uh, Grant had a lot of insight into this, and he's convinced that anything north of about where I'm at here in southern Iowa is going to be impacted uh, significantly, measurably, this coming year in both the number of fawns that, that make it uh, because the does are reabsorbing these fawns, uh, the fetuses, and then also the antler size of the bucks this coming year. He believes that anywhere from 15 to 25 percent reduction in antler size is, is an expectation in these upper Midwestern regions that have received all these cold temperatures and all this snow. And that's a result of stress levels. Uh, the deer, uh, if they don't go into the winter in prime shape with a lot of fat, they really get depleted. And as they get depleted, you know, their bodies have to regenerate that. They have to, uh, to uh, come back to those levels, to those healthy levels again in the spring before they can start growing antlers. And it takes a while. If this snow hangs on and, it, and the spring is late, uh, these deer could enter the, the normal growing season in very poor condition. In fact, some of the guys in the office were out during that cold snap and they found does that had actually frozen in their beds. You know, whether they're injured and died and froze in that spot or if they really just literally froze to death, uh, I don't know, but it is possible for that to happen. You know, Grant expressed that, that, you know, deer, as they deplete their energy reserves, they will bed down thinking, okay, I'm just gonna wait this out, and they don't make it through. Uh, they have a cold snap that they uh, just, you know, they die, and they freeze to death right in their beds. So it's pretty rough. Uh, it's, so anyway, getting back to how this affects us, um, most important thing is if you're north of the line, you know, roughly a southern Missouri, or southern Iowa, northern Missouri, there's likely to be an impact this coming year. And the only thing we can do about it at this point, uh, possibly we could go in and cut down some trees, some small trees that have twigs and buds that the deer could feed on. That's way better than trying to do any kind of supplemental feeding that could introduce a food source that the deer aren't capable of digesting. 
uh, and that would be very dangerous to the deer. So don't go out there and think, okay, I've got these problems, I need to fix them by pouring corn out or putting alfalfa hay out. Uh, more than likely, you're gonna do way more damage than you're gonna do good. Uh, supplemental feeding, we're too late into the winter for that. So we're just gonna have to tough this one out and, and, you know, and, and see the results of it uh, when the spring and summer come. Uh, I'm excited though about what we can get into once the snow disappears. I mean, we've got some shed hunting to do. I need to get out and see if I can find the carcass from that big seven that I was hunting last year. I, I still think that deer is probably dead. You know, I don't know that he is, but my gut says that he is. And I want to get out and look and find out for sure. I'm going to scour the farm just as much of it as I possibly can and see if I can find that deer. So as soon as the snow's off, that's going to be one of my missions. Uh, we're going to do some scouting, uh, talk about food plot planning, frost seeding, clover plots, and just general uh, deer behavior and deer biology, land management. This off season is a lot of fun. I enjoy it. I, I love the season, of course, too, but this time of year, we get to dive into subjects that we just don't have time for during the season. Well, hopefully you got something out of today's episode. I know it was kind of sobering and I hate bringing you bad news on the very first off season episode of the year, but that's just the life of the white-tailed deer during a hard winter like this. Well, I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big. <laughs>